So now that we've set the stage, here's the most interesting and my favorite part. What we are beginning to understand that there's something very magical about this differential world, the inward spiral of the electron and the ever more expansive spiral of the positron. I mean, for one thing, can you see that it sets the stage to understand the universe as, you know, no wonder, no matter how small a, an element of of so-called existence we're able to identify, there's always seems to be something smaller, right? And it, but it also sets the stage for why manifest form seems to keep expanding. We know that the universe is continuing to expand, something that Big Bang Theory cannot explain. Because whenever you have an explosion, we know that the farther up from the boundaries of the explosion you go, everything starts to shrink and quieten down. Why is the universe continuing to expand? Why is our planet Earth continuing to expand? Why is our intelligence seemingly continued to expand? Why does the human form seem to be getting bigger? We all know that people in the Middle Ages were much smaller, right? So one of the things that implies is that the nature of this resonance that is created is actually an infinitely open field. It's not closed. It has, in a sense, unlimited potentiality. So, digging a little deeper into this, one of the things we're starting to notice, two things, is that as a consequence of this differential harmonic, when the electron starts to spin inside of the positron, and I'll have more to say, this gets a little bit more complex to explain how this might happen, and I'll have more to say about this in a paper that I'm writing, which you can download as a free download on our website. But one of the characteristics of this interaction between the inwardly whirling electron and the outwardly expanding positron is that it creates up a resonance, a harmonic resonance. And it seems to be, thanks to my son David, who's put out a brilliant paper on differentials, there seems to be something about the nature of this differential resonance that begins to create sacred geometry internally. It begins to create the very elemental, uh, sort of I, perfectly equilateral triangle structure, three-dimensional structure like a pyramid, out of which ever more complex sacred ge geometrical patterns seem to emerge. So. I, very much as a consequence of this world, it's like sacred structures of geometry which at the very first most stable structure, not the perfectly stable structure, but the first really noticeable stable structure that seems to emerge is something equivalent through the, to the three-dimensional Star of David. I mean, imagine that. A picture of the, the Star of David in three dimensions so that there's a triangle coming out and going backward in every direction, okay? And picture that, that somehow your ability to tune into the quantum field by attuning to your heart where the, the Star of David is meant to represent the inner awakeness of a beautifully attuned heart. I mean, that was one of the original uh, representations of the Star of David. And I'll, as you read my book, you'll see that it's also the basis for the formation of the Ohm symbol within the Hindu tradition. It's also the basis for the formation of the pure diamond in the Muslim Sufi tradition, the pure diamond heart of a realized Sufi master, right? So, in a sense, what we're saying is that there's something about this differential hum that begins to facilitate the creation of sacred geometry at ever more complex levels in terms of the outer bands that we were talking about. So in other words, you know, something even like the human form at a very sophisticated level is you could see in terms of fractal formation based on sacred geometry that we seem to fractalize out of this resonance. Now, isn't that amazing? Because what I'm saying is that the more you learn to attune 
to that inner resonance, this is what helps to empower you to manifest whatever sacred structures you have decided to intend and to form. Okay? So can you see that the heart as the center of our ability to attune to the hum of the quantum field, which I'm going to get into right now, because the other quality that seems to emerge from that interactive resonance is something that has been referred to throughout the different spiritual traditions as a hum. In a sense, when you are most heart open, most attuned to the quantum field, our popular saying is like, wow, my day just hummed today, right? Everything hummed along. I was in a zone. I was just, it was like I was soaring. And I felt so alive and so beautiful that I couldn't help but manifest beautifully today, right? So what we're saying is that when we're most awake to that interactive resonance between the electron and the positron, when we're so awake that we can feel our life force dancing within us, we're so awake that we can see, wow, everything is beautifully, wow, wonderfully interconnected. And then we can feel the wonder, the beauty of that interconnection within the very core of us, our hearts. This is exactly when we feel the most empowered. It's also when we're humming like this, when we, we say that we elevate totally in love with life. We feel like we're soaring like an eagle. Have you ever heard the expression by T Chief Dan George, my heart soars like an eagle? What he was saying, he said, like an eagle, because in that moment, he was so in at one minute tune, so in love with the soaring eagle, that he was in non-separate harmony in a place of total attunement with the eagle. And so it can be with anything. I think I shall never see a palm as lovely as a tree. So here's the whole thing. It's like we have been designed to attune to pure quantum energy and to discover within us the place of non-separation from the aliveness from the infinite interconnectedness, the non-localness, from the quantum hum of the singular field itself. And whenever we're most in tune with this is when, exactly when, we become the most beautifully empowered, powerful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Om Shanti Om. <laughs>